Welcome to WebRoot's Threat Vlog. I'm Grayson Milborn, and I'm here to bring you the news and updates for last week's threats. Last week we saw two pretty big events take place, and the first one I'm going to talk about was an attack on uh, a Tor service. And first to start off, I want to talk about what Tor is. Uh, Tor is an anonymous proxy network that allows people to connect to their network and browse and, and surf the web um, and, and act over the internet anonymously. Uh, Tor provides a, a hidden services uh, offering which allows you basically to host a server inside of their network and have anonymous transactions take place with your server. Um, so there was one such hosting site in uh, Tor services called Freedom Hosting and this is a service inside of Tor that provides hosting services for email and uh, also for other servers uh, for whatever task that uh, a user might need. Um, and so it was recently discovered that on Freedom Hosting's site uh, there was a malicious JavaScript attack which exploited a zero-day threat uh, against the Firefox browser. Um, and this is really important because when people access Tor, uh, typically they will go to the Tor website and they'll download the Tor browser bundle, uh, which is an all-in-one bundle that gives you access to the Tor network. Now, the Tor bundle includes Firefox 17, um, and this specific attack uh, exploited a vulnerability um, in Firefox 17. Now, I should say that this has since been patched, but for a number of hours, uh, the Freedom Hosting site inside of Tor uh, was capable of basically identifying the users who were connecting to the Tor service, which is basically what Tor uh, prevents. Uh, it gives you that anonymous access, and so uh, this exploit basically collected your identity. Um, it collected your MAC address, um, as well as your account ID and your IP address. And so they collect the information of who you are connecting to that service. Um, analysis of the exploit revealed some really interesting information. First, we saw that the exploit code didn't actually perform a lot of actions. Outside of collecting the MAC address and the IP address, along with the account username, uh, no other data was collected and no other payloads were distributed. Typically, when we see a zero-day exploit uh, uh, be leveraged, we will see that the payload includes a backdoor or some other way to gain remote access to that endpoint. In this case, we see that it was simply intelligence gathering. Now, when we looked at where did this intelligence go, we see that the information was sent back to an IP address that registers uh, to a building location uh, in Virginia, which is associated to a company called SAIC. Now, who is SAIC? Well, they're a software company that is contracted out by NSS, or, uh, sorry, uh, the CIA um, and the National Security Agency, NSA is what I meant to say there. Um, and this is really interesting because we know that they spend a lot of money developing zero-day exploits um, to uh, have them in our cybercrime arsenal. And so it was interesting here to see that they leveraged one of these expensive to generate exploits uh, to collect intelligence about people who are connecting to these Tor hidden services. So we found that to be a really interesting story this week. Uh, now on to the other big breaking news of the week. Um, there was an Apple proof of concept piece of malware that made it out onto the iTunes application store. Um, this is pretty big news because Apple does a very good job, traditionally, of preventing malicious apps from getting onto their uh, app store. Um, what's interesting about this is first that it was a proof of concept uh, type of attack and so no actual users were impacted by this attack. Um, but what the authors of the uh, malicious uh, application did is that they released an application that had very benign behavior. Um, in this case, it was a, a news app and it would update with uh, news stories as they were released. Um, but in the background, there was a number of functions that were designed to be recompiled after the app has installed onto the iPhone. And so what they were able to do is, post being installed, uh, were able to re compile the components into the actual new malicious app on the device. And once infected, they're able to read your contacts, monitor your email, attack other applications. And probably, you know, most scary to me was there was a component to control the Safari browser, which was able to redirect it to a website of their choice, where they were then able to install additional malicious apps. So, uh, pretty interesting story, and it will be interesting to also to see Apple's response to this uh, proof of concept test as Apple has a, you know, a strong history of denying the, the existence of malicious apps in the iPhone environment. Um, however, this is a, a great proof of concept to show that the app inspection process has some flaws that need to be addressed. So uh, that does it this week. Uh, I look forward to seeing everyone next week for another weekly update from the WebRoot Threat Vlog. I'm Grayson Milborn, signing off.